You know, I was debating, do I want to talk about this game? Do I, do I really want to make a post-game review on a Vancouver Canucks 4-1 to loss? Well, you know, it was the first Canucks game since March. And even though it was an exhibition game, and it technically doesn't matter, oh man, it still feels really bad. This is why I did not want to live stream myself watching this game. If you were tuning in to our pre-game hype stream, which went on for an hour before the Canucks game, then you would have seen me the entire time say, you know what, I'm a nasty Canucks fan. When I watch this team and the team does something I don't like, I get very loud, and I don't want to show that off to the internet. And man, this game is probably the best example as to why I should not livestream myself watching the games. By the way, though, we did get, uh, I think it was 100 viewers at its peak at one time, and I think 1,000-something total views because people were coming in, coming out of the stream. So I very much appreciate that. That was the first live stream that I have done on YouTube ever, but it's like the second or third live stream I've ever done. I used to do these on Twitch where I would play Wolfenstein, but at the same time, those got no views, so I'm not really experienced with the whole live streaming thing. That was also like five years ago, too, so certainly not something that is too desirable, but I will say that this pregame live stream was actually really fun to do. It was awesome talking to you all and sharing some opinions, sharing some comments, and having some thoughts thrown out there. There was a little bit of a, let's just say, rowdiness going on in the chat, I will say that, but at the same time, it was still awesome to see, and we'll definitely do a few more of those as time goes on. But for this Vancouver Canucks game, I honestly think things were pretty... pretty okay. Pretty okay. It's just, in the moment, it felt really bad, but reflecting on it, Seeing that it's an exhibition game, seeing that this doesn't really matter, it feels a little bit more better internalizing that information alongside of what we already had. But before this game even started, we had some word that Jake Vertanen and Louis Erickson, these two guys, they're not going to play. Olio Levy, he is going to play. Sutter, Beagle, Mott, Furland, these guys are all going to play. And a lot of what we saw with McEwen and Furland and Yolevi that we talked about in the rumors video earlier this week where we talked about how Jake Vertanen could have been taken out of the lineup, it all came true. Yolevi was actually the seventh D-man, he was playing in that left-handed spot, and he actually got some pretty good looks out there. I'm not gonna lie, only Yolevi and his breakout pass honestly is as solid as we have come and expected it to be. The guy just knows how to throw the puck and hail Mary at long distances. Furthermore, Zach McEwen, the big fella, the guy had a really bad moment where he got taken down to the ice after getting clipped to the boards, but other than that, I honestly thought he was pretty okay. He definitely did belong in the lineup. As for Sutter, Beagle, Mott, Furland, all those guys too. Sutter had a few moments where he had some really good looks, but he just shot the puck a little bit too high or right into the goalie's blocker or something. Certainly frustrating to see that, but I can totally see why he's actually in the lineup. Beagle, he had a few good moments. I honestly thought that Beagle, especially early on in the game, looked pretty solid. There were some times where the Canucks were kind of jammed and then Beagle took the puck and he backhanded it off the boards out into the neutral zone. I thought that was a pretty smart play that he did. And then Michael Furland, he lasted the whole game. That was a concern that was brought up in the live stream that some of you talked about, and it certainly was a point to be concerned about. But he lasted, and he ended up playing throughout a few hits here and there, not super aggressive, not like the same Furland we saw in 2015, but I think everybody was kind of playing a little bit more lax on the physical side because, you know, you save that for your actual play in series opponent. Furlan had a few good shots too. They were kind of far out and they didn't really hit the target, but at the same time, he did have some good looks out there. So we'll definitely see how Furlan is able to adjust as these play-in series starts. But on Jake Vertanen though, the guy was shown off in, I think it was like the upper, very upper bowls. It looked like it was the suites of Roger's place wearing a mask over there. So it certainly isn't awesome to see him out the way he was. But you know, if somebody beats him on the lineup, then you just got to do what you got to do. But the Vancouver Canucks lose this one 4-1 to to the Winnipeg Jets, and pretty much in this game we learned just exactly why Connor Hellebuck is a Vesna caliber goalie, and he's probably going to win that award this season, just saying. 
The guy was saving Vancouver Canucks shots. Brock Besser had a few really good opportunities. He had a breakaway where he tried to go backhand through the wickets, but that was shut down by the stick of Hellebuck. And the guy just had everybody's number. All the PD one-timers were stopped. The Bo Horvat rushes were stopped. The Brock Besser snipe attempts were stopped. And the really good plays set up by Miller and Quinn Hughes were all stopped too. Ah, oh, man. At the very least, Connor Hellebuck does not play for the Minnesota Wilds, so at least we have that to cheer about. But a lot of the Winnipeg goals showed off what we've come to expect with this Vancouver Canucks team. Defensive lapses. Pinches where it puts everybody else out of place, and opportunities where Tyler Myers is sprawled out in front or not really getting the man properly, and... Yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that if you've seen any Vancouver Canucks game from 2019-20. When it comes to the defense, we all kind of know that Minnesota has a better decor than Vancouver's. They have one of the better decors in the league, and that's probably the most interesting thing about this, because even though Minnesota has a better decor than what I would say the Vancouver Canucks has... The Minnesota Wild lost, and they lost badly to the Colorado Avalanche. Now, you could say that that's because that's Colorado and they're really good, like Nathan McKinnon. Absolute monster that guy is. But, seriously, they still lost, and it kind of gives fuel to the fire as to how we think either of these teams could be able to play against each other. They both lost, and they're both in a position where they need momentum going into the play-in series. We only get one shot at these exhibition games, so... The fact that we kind of blew ours kind of does sting, but at the same time, at least Minnesota blew theirs too. They didn't even get a goal, so huh, at least we got that. Speaking about that, let's talk about that goal. I don't want to talk about the Winnipeg goals. Let's just talk about the Antoine Roussel goal. Adam Gaudet, the hockey god, man. Ma, this guy, the war zone streamer himself, is the guy who comes in and he wraps the puck around. And he shoves it out in front, Hellebuck can't really control it, and then Antoine Roussel is there to come in and shove it into the goal. If we see more plays like that from Antoine Roussel, we see plays like that from Michael Furland, we see Adam Gaudet as the puck-moving, play-facilitating center on that line. I think that third line definitely has the potential to become a really underrated goal-scoring line. Goals where they crash the net, goals where they shoot it out in front and they overhaul the slot area. Sure, I thought Jake Vertanen probably could have had a really nice sniping presence on that line, but if he's not in the lineup, then hey, the way they assembled things looked pretty good too, so that certainly was a positive in this game. Other positives, Quinn Hughes skating pretty well, Elias Pettersson the one-time snipes, hey, you know... At least he got him off. They looked pretty deadly, it's just that they didn't go in. Jacob Markstrom was honestly okay. Sure, you could say he let in three goals, but a lot of those goals were kind of, yeah, not great defensive efforts by the Vancouver Canucks in general. There were definitely some moments, though, where Markstrom stopped a shot or two that probably should have gone in, so definitely does have that mojo back over there. I wouldn't be surprised if Markstrom himself was really frustrated with how he let in three goals in this game. But at the same time, when you play a Minnesota team that is a little bit more conservative on the offense than Winnipeg is with the Lineys, the Shifleys, the Rosloviks, man, that guy is so fast, and the Ehlers, etc. There certainly is an opportunity to actually use a game like this to really help you in that play-in series, and that's really what I just hope the most out of this situation, because the game did kind of suck to watch, and I certainly did get a little bit nasty when I was watching this in my head, but it's a valuable learning experience. Still, getting the teams out there, playing a game, and actually experiencing what it's like to play professionally against another hockey team. And I just hope that we have ourselves the ability to see why this Vancouver Canucks team is seen as an underdog by some analysts out there. I want to see JT Miller and Toffoli combine for a PD goal. I want to see Bo Horvat actually do the toe drag on the rush and actually have it work. I want to see this team do the things that we know they're capable of doing. And a lot of what we saw against Winnipeg was just them not performing up to that standard. But I get it. I get it. It's an exhibition game. We're not supposed to get super high and mighty over this if we win. We're not supposed to get super depressed if we lose. But as the first Vancouver Canucks game in, what, March to July, so that's three months, four months? We probably do have to overreact a little bit to this, especially as the city of Vancouver, since we're so passionate about hockey, almost to the point of 
consistent toxicity. So talk to me in the comments below what you thought about this Vancouver Canucks game. Were you happy with what you saw? Were you really displeased with what you saw? I know I certainly was displeased in the moment, but reflecting on it now, I certainly had some time to calm down, and now I'm just thinking about it like, okay, at least we know what this team is about now, and we can use that to develop a strategy against the Wild, especially since they lost two. So talk to me in the comments below what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. Social Dash Trolls 99, and... Bye.